Music is a tradition as old as time. Archaeologists have dated the earliest known instruments, flutes made of bone and ivory, back to between 40 and 45,000 years ago. Music is often seen as a communal activity, with the earliest recorded public performances often being ritualistic or religious. Public performance has evolved a lot since then. Humans have even created venues designed to enhance the music played in them, such as the concert hall. These venues have been around for hundreds of years. For example, the world's oldest functioning opera house, the Titro di San Carlo, first opened its doors in 1737. Recently, however, advances in technology have informed the design of new halls and the renovation of old ones. Computer modeling allows acousticians to learn about the movement of sound in spaces before construction ever begins. In this video, I'll be sharing with you an acoustic model of a concert hall I created using the wave equation, modeled through the use of partial differential equations. The object of this video is to demonstrate how sound travels in a simplified model of a concert hall, and demonstrate how these interactions may affect what an audience member in this hall would hear. First, let me begin with a description of the system I will be using, as well as some of the simplifying assumptions I made to allow my model to work. I will be using a square concert hall, which is 150 meters on one side. The sound source will be a short, localized clap on one side of the hall, where a stage would usually go. You can see the position of the clap in the plot on the screen, which is denoted by the bright point of light. In my model, I will be slowing the sound wave down considerably, to about 1 75th the normal speed of sound. I do this to show the interesting interactions which take place just after the sound is emitted. After a couple of seconds, the sound dissipates into the room anyway, and a silent room isn't the best model to study sound by. For my equation, I will be using the two-dimensional wave equation, shown here. I have converted this equation into a form that a computer can understand, and wrapped that in a function. I will be using the Python function odeint to solve the system as an initial value problem. Let me jump over to my Jupyter notebook, where I will walk you through an outline of my algorithm. Here, you can see my function, which takes several inputs, including the initial state of the system, a time scale over which the model will iterate, as well as the size of the array which represents our test area. The algorithm is based off of these partial differential equations, which represent the wave equation. The function returns the values of the velocity and acceleration of the sound wave at each point in the hall. The cell below creates parameters, which will be fed to the function as initial conditions. This variable, f, represents the initial shape of the sound wave when t equals zero. This cell also performs an integration of the function over the time scale by using the Python function odeint and stores the result as a variable for use later. Below, I have plotted an image of the initial conditions. Notice that the noise is displayed as a localized point. As time goes on, this wave will propagate out from that point as a sound wave. In the next cell, I have created an animation which shows the evolution of the sound wave. Some prominent things to notice are that the sound is radiated in all directions, which can cause an echo, and that the sound wave interferes with itself, leading to nodes of loud and weak sound in the space. You can see that part of the wave propagates in the direction of a nearby wall, reflects, and follows the portion of the sound wave which was emitted in the opposite direction. This is an echo. It has been known to contribute to the tone of the sound being played. A well-known example of this echoing is within old churches, which many musicians say adds an ethereal quality to music. In the next cell, I have plotted a freeze frame of the sound wave a while after it was initially emitted. This plot demonstrates that the distribution of sound across the space is not uniform. The simulation modeled a single clap, but if the sound were sustained, the system should settle into a constant distribution of air pressure across the hall, caused by the interference of the sound wave with itself. As a tangent, this balance of sound, called a standing wave, can be used to move objects in the space. I have linked a Wired article below which goes into more detail on this concept uh, and how it can be used to levitate very light materials. Now that I have found how sound travels through the hall, what would someone sitting in the hall, an audience member, hear? This next set of shells shows the amplitude of the sound wave an audience member would hear over time. Below is another example of a different position in the crowd. You can see that the uneven distribution of air pressure caused by the sound wave changes how each member of the crowd hears the noise. This isn't anything drastic. It's not like the two members of the same crowd would hear different melodies. This will, however, minutely affect the volume of the sound each member of the audience experiences. Thank you for watching. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments.